It's a new year and we want to start it off with some positive news. We have inspiring stories from all across the country, messages of hope and encouragement. It's just amazing to know that your voice can make a difference or just seeing it visually, you can be a difference. It all just takes like one tiny step and that step towards making a difference is always something amazing to be a part of. Things might not be going the way that you want them to be or how you plan them to be, but you have to keep trying and you have to keep holding on to your purpose and what brings you meaning in life. I have a purpose. I know my purpose now. We keep it positive here. This is Good to Know and I'm your host, Lindsay Boat. Now that I've started this, I can't stop. I mean, I think about it nonstop. It's all I want to do. It gives us a purpose, and isn't that what everybody needs, is a purpose? It's changed me in some forms before I didn't know what I was capable of. It's really cool to see a lot of other people kind of get their dreams going and, and inspires people, and that's what's neat about it. I get joy from the knowing that all them prayers my grandmother said was not in vain. Probably the most rewarding thing that you could ever do. It has been a very challenging year for a lot of people and to have this hope that's shared and yeah, the joy that comes from it, it's pretty amazing. Our inspirational journey begins with a man in Utah who found purpose in his life, even while facing some pretty tough odds. We hike to see the view, but right now, on some Utah mountains, the best view comes from inside a Ziploc bag. I've just always been interested in the message in a bottle. A message of love on some of the places Brandon Lingwall loves most. I did it to live vicariously through other people. Just because it was hiking was pretty much my life. In 1999, Brandon was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, or MS. I've never been able to teach my son to ride a bike or throw a football or catch a ball or kick a ball or run. or. Last year, he went on hospice care. You know, if you would have asked me a year and a half ago, I would have thought I'm just going to wither and die right here. And... <laughs> then she came along. Brenna Brooks is Brandon's hospice social worker, formally, but truthfully, she's his beacon of hope. I never thought I'd go on hospice and it would give me a reason to live. Their friendship has changed both their lives. A lot of people will ask, like, how can you do that job? It's such a, a sad and hard job, but it's people like Brandon that, um, remind you how how lucky it is to be able to witness someone's story. Brandon's story isn't over. These letters are proof of that. I didn't think I would have a huge footprint on this earth after I was diagnosed and then all of a sudden we came up with this idea and it's got huge. Brenna helped make this possible, hiking Brandon's message up the mountain. The opportunity to be Brandon's hands and type the type out his words and to be his legs and hike this to a mountain. Um, it was such an honor and such a privilege. The message is simple. Read it, take a picture and send it to Brandon, telling him how it impacted you. And the messages just keep on coming. Oh yeah, I forget about MS when, when after somebody finds it. And every time my phone dings off a notification, it's I'm so excited to get to it. Well, Brandon's view is coming from a photo. It's the most beautiful one he's ever seen because it's spreading the most important thing of all, love. With the time you have left, hug everybody you know every day. Finding ways to inspire can be a lifesaver, and that's One Mom's mission in Virginia. And we got there, and he was gone. Julie Garner has been enduring a painful journey for 13 years. And I just walked the halls of the trauma center, 
in the middle of the night. The Spotsylvania County woman carries a heavy burden. I literally felt as if someone had taken their fist, shoved it into my gut, and twisted. On June 10th, 2007, her only son, 16-year-old Hunter, was killed in a car crash. I knew in that moment, call it mother's instinct, intuition, whatever you want, I knew he was dead. I knew he was dead. But within hours of Hunter's death, Julie and her family took action. So I knew at that point when he died that I just had to save everybody else I could. Out of the tragedy, Project Yellow Light was born. The goal is to save lives. The nationwide competition encourages high school and college students to create their own PSA about the dangers of distracted driving. Kind of kept me alive and, and gave me a reason to live. Julie believes young drivers will pay more attention if the message comes from their peers. They just don't think it's going to happen to them. And it happens every day all across the country. Hey, world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Cambria Cook from Chesterfield entered her PSA, put your phone down last spring. And trying to take somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The sophomore music education major at Claflin University always reminds friends to pay attention to the road. And any time they do it, I grab their phones. I'm like, yo, this is it, okay? This is YOLO. We only have one life to live, and we need to make good decisions as we're doing this. Just give me your phone. So I use take their phone. The 20-year-old recently learned her film won the top spot, earning her a scholarship and her PSA showing in New York's Times Square. It was just amazing to know that your voice can make a difference or just seeing it visually, you can be a difference. It all just takes like one tiny step and that step towards making a difference is always something amazing to be a part of. Cambria says while the accolades are cool, her message is downright serious. You never know when something bad can happen. So you must stay alert and stay focused on the road. And, uh, yeah. Julie Garner. So, tough. It's tough for me to think about. Still grieves for her only son, Hunter, who would have been 29. I just had to do this to, um, to keep going. Mm -hmm. Knowing Hunter's legacy lives on through Project Yellow Light and Cambria Cook provides some inner peace. And I knew that the young people had the best voices and the best ability to connect with each other in a way that adults just can't. And I just want them to realize how serious this is. I want them to stay alive. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Just be careful on the road. Carlisle has quite a story to tell, and her name, Charisma, speaks volumes to her character. This 20-year-old Detroiter is a real go-getter, and she is on a career path that is quite impressive. I started when I was 17. I think one, more women should get into it. Charisma is into construction. This beauty is a bricklayer. One project that I helped to build is right behind me. That's right. Check it out. An apartment complex downtown in the D. I was the start crew. And her current project? I'm at the Buell building working with Ram Construction. After graduating high school, Charisma was considering a few different options for her future. Either the military or something hands-on. And that foundation was formed at the Saxe Construction Academy. Todd Saxe is beyond proud to be the founder and CEO of this company. Because for him, being a builder is not just about building places and things. It is about people, too. Our whole focus is really about the youth of Detroit, and we really believe that we can have an impact for these young men and women and show them an opportunity. An opportunity that everyone should know exists. The Academy can give you a chance to create something that can live for legacies long. They're going to plant the seeds with these young men and women and watch them, encourage them, and teach them to flourish. And seeing the success is such a beautiful thing to witness. We're very passionate about this. Right after the Academy, I went on to start my job. It's really, really rewarding. Thank you for opening up new doors. I turn around and say thank you, Charisma, for putting in the effort, the time, and the commitment, because it is hard work and taking the leap of faith. Because it has already been beyond fruitful, and the sky is the limit. You have a job and a career for life if you have those skills, and no one can take them away from you.
There's so much more that's good to know, including the inspiring story of an old friendship that led to a life-changing moment. I approached my husband and I said, an old classmate of mine, Rachel, needs help. And I think that this is something that we can do. It's good to know.